Good morning, my gorgeous friends on the internet. In this episode, I want to talk about different technologies and apps uh, that you should be looking forward to in 2019. I got my coffee, it's morning. I'm lying. This is whiskey. And the technologies I picked don't necessarily focus on one specific thing, like only web development. It's kind of a wider range of things. And the reason I picked these is because I think they're very awesome. I'm very excited about them. And I eventually want to cover them on my channel. So let's get going. But wait a minute, Ed. There's no magic trick in this episode? There is. There's going to be a magic trick. It's somewhere in the video. It's going to be hidden. You're going to have to notice it. So don't blink. Keep your eyes open, always. It's getting kind of hard, I'm getting teared up. Okay, the first technology on the list is gonna be one thing. If you want to learn web development, there is only one programming language you're gonna need, and that's JavaScript. I'm not gonna put HTML and CSS, they're the little children, okay? They're not really programming languages, so I'm not gonna put them in the same bucket. In the same bucket as JavaScript. Uh, but with this technology, man, there's so much you can do. If you want to build a website, you can use JavaScript to add dynamic content, fetch data from the internet, from an API. If you want to build a web app, you can use a framework like React, Vue, or whatever there is these days, Svelte. And you can also do desktop apps with Electron, so still using JavaScript, and even some mobile apps. But I'm not going to recommend that because I have another technology on the list that might surprise you. Well, it might not, it's not that surprising because it's really popular right now. Number two on the list is the mobile app maker that I was talking about, and that's gonna be Flutter, okay? If you don't know what Flutter is, Flutter is a way you can build mobile apps. Now, the beautiful thing is that you can build one app and then it splits up into two magical boys iOS and Android. So you build once and then you can put it on both platforms. The disadvantage though is that it uses Dart. If you don't know what Dart is, nobody knows what Dart is. Dart is a programming language that ancient Egyptians used in making the pyramids, but then they kind of abandoned it because that's the only thing it was good for. But right now Google's like, let's take that pyramid technology and add it to our framework. Like, come on, bruh. Over the past few months, I actually been waiting to see what kind of happens with these technologies um, and where they're progressing. And I feel like Flutter is in a better position and state right now than React Native, even though that's more popular. Uh, so this is a technology I do want to cover in 2019. So it's going to be very fun. Number three on the list is going to be Ligma, uh, Figma. Figma is a great way you can prototype your websites or your apps. Why am I holding my hand here? Uh, so what you can do rather than building out your website without seeing how your website looks, you actually build out the look of your website in Figma. And after that, you have a good idea of how to implement that specific thing in your code. The awesome things are that you can do prototyping as well. So you can add animations while clicking on something or hovering on something straight in Figma. You, you have frames to do mobile version if you want. And they keep updating it a ton. Like, I, I swear to God, every time I, I wake up in the morning and I open up Figma, hey, there's an update. Whoa, we just added, we just made another Figma, Figma 2.0. These motherfuckers quick. Number four on the list is gonna be this hat. It's trending right now in 2019. Get yours today by going to devat.com slash hats for 20 bucks. Why do I keep lying? So number four on the list is gonna be Affinity Photo. So what Affinity Photo is, is kind of like an alternative to Photoshop, but the benefits is that it's only $50 and you pay once and in Photoshop, you have to pay a monthly subscription, which gets kind of expensive after like three months. And the awesome thing about Affinity Photo is, is that it has almost all the functionality as Photoshop, but on top of that, the UI and the UX is way better. You can find things way easier in Affinity Photo than in Photoshop. And I've been working in Photoshop for, for a long time now, and I know what I'm talking about. It's like, sometimes you have options. Does this annoy you? I'm sorry. 
uh, sometimes you, you just have different like 10 options to do one specific thing and that can be nice sometimes but for example with like refine edge uh, if you want to like cut out a picture and you want to refine the edge there's like two ways you can do that and the the one that's built in right now is actually a worse way than you can do before so you have to do like a specific hack and hold control shift and then press view and select the mask and then it opens up a special window and then that special window everything works better so i'm sorry but photoshop is so so bloated sometimes and i'm not gonna lie it's a refreshing thing to use affinity photo and the nice thing is that you can also export to psd so if all your buddies are still parting in that creative cloud um, then it's fine because you can send them a psd using affinity photo and also, it's just a great way if you're interested in design, graphic design, or building out specific, a specific feel or specific image for your website. Uh, you can build out very nice images, you can composite something beautiful uh, that you can add to your image, website, whatever you want. If you want to build out a music app, uh, maybe you can do a nice cover of an artist or just think outside of the box. Number five on the list is going to be Affinity Designer. And this is kind of an alternative to Adobe Illustrator and what it allows you to do is to create basically illustrations logos if you want to work with SVGs which are basically uh, vectors that can scale infinitely so if you want to do a big banner uh, you can you can create an SVG if you want to do a logo that can scale up infinitely uh, so if you want to add those to your website or whatever design you want to do uh, you can use affinity designer now why am i picking this again over adobe illustrator the reason why i'm picking these because if you're interested in these technologies um, it's going to be way more affordable uh, to pick affinity designer because if you want to get the pack with illustrator it's going to be 30 bucks if you want to get all the apps it's going to be like 60 bucks or something like that something crazy per month and with this one you can just pay once and it's very cheap and it does 99 percent of the things you want to do anyway um, and it's also easier to learn now where adobe wins is they have a bunch of tutorials on youtube so anything you want to find you're probably going to find with adobe illustrator but the nice thing is that these programs are so similar that you can technically watch a Adobe Illustrator tutorial and transfer it to, to Affinity Designer because it's mostly the same tools. Number six on the list is gonna be Unity. Unity allows you to build out games and a multi wide range of platforms. So if you wanna build a mobile game, you wanna build a desktop game, PlayStation game, you can use Unity. And the reason why I picked Unity over things like Unreal Engine is because I feel like it's easier to get into Unity. There are more tutorials online on Unity. And I feel like uh, with Unity, you can kind of get away with doing 2D games, 3D games, and a wider range of games, whereas Unreal, I feel like it focuses more on FPS games. But with Unity, again, you have that wide range of, of freedom. And it also uses C Sharp, which makes it kind of nice uh, to program in. You can also program in with JavaScript, but most tutorials out there are going to work with C Sharp, whereas Unreal uses C++. Number seven on the list is going to be Blender. Blender is a 3D software. You can create 3D models, you can sculpt, create animations, you can create uh, game assets. There, there's so much you can do with it. And the best part is that it's free. So I've been learning Blender for the past few years, but recently they came out with a new update that changes everything. Okay, they revamped the whole UI, they added a bunch of features, and I feel like right now, 2019, it's the right tool to learn. So hey, this goes very well together with Unity. So you can learn Blender to create 3D assets and you can use Unity, boom, boom, mash them together and you have a full on game. You can also use it in your website. If you use 3JS, you can import Blender uh, models into your website. And whew, you can come up with some cool things right there. 
And again, I cannot stress this enough. The best part of it is that it's free. So you can just jump in and try it out comparing to the other software, which were crazy expensive. Uh, it's just a no brainer for me and the tutorials online. Mwah amazing so thank you very much again for watching this episode hope you enjoyed this one and until next time make sure to ring that bell like santa is coming to town make sure to put the cookies and milk because otherwise you're gonna be like why you do this santa why you do this to me and you don't want that you want santa to bring all the good stuff like this camera the sony digital handycam Okay, this is what you want for Christmas. I, bro I broke it.